All right, hello everybody. My name is Dalton Rullinger, and welcome back to Sailwind. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't really been showing you what I've been doing with the brig here lately. I've mostly just been kind of traveling around from the around the local islands here in the eastern region, just kind of trying to get a feel for the brig. And um, I've got some mixed feelings about her. I'm not gonna lie. I uh, I can't really make up my mind if I like her or not. But uh, for this video. I don't know if I have enough time to do it tonight or not in one go, but we're going to try and make our way to Happy Bay, which is just kind of an, it's kind of like Oasis. It's kind of an isolated island to the north of um, the Emerald Archipelago. It's kind of halfway between Astrin and Emerald Archipelago. It's technically part of the Astrin region, but you can't really take missions there, apparently. Uh, at least not from where I'm currently at, so... Um, don't really have that much money left in the Eastern Crowns. For today's cargo, we are going to be hauling three bits of iron and a box of gems. Um, the bits of iron are going to bring in roughly around 700 odd extra coins, while the gems are going to bring in an extra two grand. So, this should be a pretty decent profit. Unfortunately, you don't really get, like, any, as far as I can tell, anyway. Um, actually, you know what, let me make a note of our current reputation. So, 19,000. Uh, if the trade goes up, then we know that the reputation through trade actually exists. But I think you only get reputation through uh, doing actual missions. Um... Maybe I'll stop at Fort Astrin itself and get some extra missions to to try and go down to Happy Bay, but uh, we'll just have to see. I don't know if I'm going to be bothered with uh, docking the ship again or not. Either way, uh, let's go ahead and just set sail and get the heck out of here, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and... That's the wrong sail. What am I doing? Cancel out that backwards movement with the sail here. So I think my main gripe with the, with the brig is that whenever all her sails are down, you cannot see the night sky. You cannot see the sky at all whatsoever. <clears throat> but with the current route that we're going I think we're probably going to have more of a crosswind than anything else so I'll be using the gap sails rather than the square sails themselves um, at, least that, that's, at least that's how it was whenever I uh, went the last time And if this is the, your first time checking out a Sailwind video, typically what I do for these long journeys is I typically just cut out the uninteresting bits. Uh, just so you guys, what typically will take like six, seven, five hours for me, it'll only take like an hour or two for you. So I try and cut down on the uh, video as much as I possibly can. You know, even with just one sail down, she actually goes pretty fast with the wind. Do I want to just go ahead and stop at Fort Astrin and try and get some extra supplies or an extra mission or something? Eh, uh, probably not. Actually, I think I'd kind of like to do a little test run for the reputation system. Let's go ahead and just start lowering this thing down. Hopefully, we don't have the same issues that we did last time with the cog. Uh, the cog sank, like, multiple different times uh, while I was doing a live stream. I actually... I, uh, 
back whenever I first started doing this Let's Play series, I actually tried doing a live stream trying to get to Happy Bay in one shot, and it was a complete and utter disaster most of the time. Okay, so I've got plenty of water. I've got five barrels of water. Uh, I've got plenty of food. I have plenty of fish hooks and firewood. Yeah, I should be perfectly fine for this. Uh, how's the winds? Let me go ahead and try and angle these a little bit. I don't want to angle them too much, but... I'd kind of like to have the wind just kind of rolling off of these gaff sails. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and release the front sails too. There's that one. And then there is that one. And then we'll also do this one as well. And this one, I kind of I kind of prefer to just leave loose. Just so it can kind of do whatever it needs to do with the wind. Uh, then these... I think I'm pulling on the outer one right now. Yeah. Okay, that's that one pulled in. Then we can start pulling in the inner one. I'm going to pull this one in a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That is all the sails I can have down for right now. I'm not going to bother lowering, lowering down the the main sails at all whatsoever because there's not really much of a point, and these things would probably make me capsize very, very quickly, especially if a storm just kind of randomly rolls up upon me. So, uh... Whether or not I stop at Happy that happy bay uh we are going to stop at happy bay regardless of what happens uh, <laughs> um if i stop at uh fort astrin i'll probably just leave in the actual bits that i'm buying supplies or uh, getting the missions themselves but i don't think i'm going to stop i think i'm just going to continue sailing get all the lanterns turned on so this thing is lit up like a freaking Christmas tree. Okay, um... Obviously you guys probably want to see at least some kind of content, so... Um... I think I'll just keep recording until we get past... Uh, probably at least past Siren Song. Just so there's, you know, a fair bit of sailing involved into the video. But, yeah, I get used to seeing this kind of sight, because I think this is probably going to be about as much sail as we actually get through most of this journey. Uh, ooh, you know what, actually, for the people who are just kind of randomly finding this video uh, out of nowhere, uh, we are up at the very top. We are at the Astrin region. We are, uh, you can't really see the island that we're sailing from on the map, but that very topmost island above Fort Astrin, uh, that is Siren Song. That is Siren Song, right? That That is... I guess these islands so confuse sometimes. Yeah, that is Siren Song. Okay, um, and we are going. We are going all the way down to Happy Bay, on latitude 35, longitude 4. So this is going to be a bit of a journey. It's not the worst by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it's it's definitely going to be a bit of a track. And 
And depending on how the ship does on, you know, the open oceans, it's going to be very fascinating to find out. Because logically, this should do, you know, the best on the open ocean with all the waves and whatnot. But uh, the brig is, she's not built for speed, is she? She's built more for, you know, transporting cargo because this is the biggest ship in the game and you can't put the most stuff on board her. Uh, for, you know, transportation and whatnot. Uh, but she turns like a train on land without the rails, and she's not quite as fast as the Sandbuck. I think the Sandbuck is probably the fastest, but the junk hang handles just so much better. Whereas this one is obviously more for, you know, just transportation. Out of curiosity, let's see how fast we're going right now. Um, best place to be is probably back here on the balcony. So right now we're going roughly about five knots. Which, I mean, I've seen worse. I've seen much worse. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and drink some stuff. I've got two barrels of rum back here as well, just uh, so people know. Uh, I'm not keeping the rum with the water or anything, so... Uh, what do I want to eat? I think I'll eat... I'll just eat some cheese. And because I'm tired enough, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, sleep, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Alright, so I've just woken up. Uh, that right there is Siren Song. That's the island that we kind of see in the distance a while ago. And the wind has annoyingly sort of blowing directly in my direction. I'm going to try and turn in a way that the wind can actually hit the sails again. Problem is, I can't see, like, where the flags are. I have seen a lot of people complain about the wind in this game. It, it, it's not a secret that the wind is a very annoying thing in this game. I mean, I'm not going to install any mods or anything that change the wind. I do enjoy the challenge of the wind, but... Man, if it doesn't get annoying with the way it just constantly blows against you. There have been times, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I have rage quit because the, uh, the wind was just that annoying. I felt like, you know, I got home, I took a shower, I put on Sailwind thinking it was going to be a nice chill time, and yeah, no, the wind just severely pissed me off enough that I just said, screw it. sure we're not going to hit these rocks. Alright, and since I'm not fully rested, I'll just go ahead and sleep again, and I'll see you guys whenever I wake up. Ah, what a beautiful, beautiful sunrise. As we look at, uh, that's Fort Asian itself over there, that is Sunspire, then that over there is Mount Malefic. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't I don't know if it's Malefic or Mount Malefic. Uh, 
I started off saying Mount Malefic, but I, I think it's Malefic. Uh, either way, once again, the wind is kind of blowing in the exact direction that I need to go in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of point the ship in roughly the right direction and just kind of let the wind carry me around. Man, I love these gaff sails. They are so freaking useful. At the bare minimum, we have passed Siren Song. And if anybody wants to see the map of the region that we are currently in... Yeah, that, that's it. We just passed Siren Song. The island directly to the south of us is Fort Aishrin. That's kind of the capital of the region. Um, so, yeah. And, yeah, you can just press F on the ceiling or, like, any flat surface, and you can just glue the maps to whatever you're pointing at. Like, I could have a map just right there if I wanted, or over here, or over here on the, what, on the wall right there. But, because they look weird anywhere else, I'm just going to go ahead and put them on the ceiling. Alright, let's head back up here. I'm going to put my spyglass on the table, just because I don't really want to hold it the entire time. Um, I should point out, if you are finding this video, and you haven't watched anything else, and you take an interest in this game... Uh, you're not going to start off with this. You start off with just one of three different ships that you can start off with. And they, they're they different depending on the region that you start off with. Uh, I started off in this particular region, which is the hard region to start in, which it, it's really not once you kind of figure out what's going on. I find the actual easy starting location to be much harder because the islands are a lot smaller. Whereas in this region... I can literally see every single island, like, right off the bat, with the exception of East Wind. Because, screw East Wind, it is a freaking nightmare to sail to if you, uh, if you overshoot it, which is very easy to do because it's very low to the water. <laughs> but yeah, if you start off in this region, you'll start off in Siren Song, and you'll start off with the Cog, which is probably... <sighs> it is technically the biggest of the starting ships but I think it can ultimately hold the least. Which I know makes total freaking sense, but the Dow that you start off with in the easy start location, I believe it can hold the most, but it's ultimately the slowest because it only has one sail. Whereas the Cog has two sails. It has the... Uh, it has a couple sails like these, or just one sail like that, excuse me. Speaking of these sails, I'm going to bring these in. It has one sail like this, then it has a regular square sail, kind of like these things up here that I don't have lowered, because they wouldn't do any good in this particular situation, because the wind is blowing in my face. Um... Yeah, you start off with that. I personally find it to be the easiest because even with the wind blowing almost directly in your face, you can still make good headway once you figure out what you're doing. In the medium start difficulty, the Emerald Archipelago, which let me show you where that is on the map. Uh, most people will know where that is if they've been watching my channel because, you know, I was there for quite a long time. But down there at the bottom right is the Dragon Cliffs and that whole archipelago just makes up the emerald archipelago it has more of an asian kind of theme to it which personally i don't really care for it's just personal taste um i've just never really cared for that kind of look but at that region which is the medium star region you start off with what is probably the biggest piece of garbage boat in the game i'm sorry i just do not like that boat at all whatsoever um, it has the least cargo space, its sails are just 
aesthetically they are not very pleasing to me and I, I, I just don't have anything nice to say about that particular boat that I, ju I just don't like it if, if I were to buy it in this playthrough I would probably just lower the sails down and just let it set sail off into the horizon never to see it ever again <laughs> um I, I, I just, I do not like the boat at all whatsoever. Um, and you're not going to start off with all these fancy tools either. Uh, the spyglass itself was almost too grand in... Um, did I buy the spyglass here or did I, did I buy it in the em Emerald Archipelago? I'm pretty sure I bought it in the Emerald Archipelago. But it was like two grand, maybe even three grand whenever I bought it. Uh, this thing, whenever you first start the game, they're like nine grand. Uh, but whenever you build up reputation, you build up uh, a discount that you can buy things cheaper with. Uh, the quadrant is probably going to be what you want to get first because this thing shows where your la uh, yeah your latitude is. Um, Basically, what you want to do is you want to point it at the North Star, and it'll tell you where you are in, with your latitude. I'll show that to you uh, next time night rolls around, but yeah, I think the only thing you start off with is literally just the compass. Like, that, that is it. Nothing else. Like, in this region, it doesn't even show you... Like, it, you don't even start start off with just a, a box of food, either. You have to buy your own food, which, if this game interests you, go back to episode one of my playthrough, and you'll kind of see how I did things. And maybe it'll, maybe it'll help you out. My videos have helped out quite a few people, which I'm very happy about. But, yeah... Uh, I'm going to pause the video here and I'll see you guys in a little while because my voice is getting very dry and I desperately need a drink of water or something. You know what? It's been a while since I had like any kind of fishing content, so let's just go ahead and start fishing because why the heck not? Um, for anybody who is looking into buying the game, uh, the fishing pole is definitely going to be one of the first things you want to buy. And the way it works is basically you just uh, put a hook, that's that's my firewood, my fire hooks are over there. You put a fishing hook on the uh, on the pole, and then you just use your mouse wheel to very, very slowly pull the fish in. And I mean slowly. And it's kind of hit and miss if you lose your hook or not whenever you pull the fish off. You can eat the fish raw, aka sushi, or you can put them on a stove like that over there and cook them. But you want to be careful because you can overcook them. You can burn them. What the? Have I caught one of you before? I assume I have. Alright, so, just like that. And this particular stove can hold four fish. Let me go ahead and reel in the... fishing hook a little bit more here. So we don't have to pull it in quite as... I'm sailing directly into the wind again. Crying out loud.
is such an annoyance sometimes. Okay. See if we can fix ourselves here. I'm just gonna cheat because I can't be bothered to do this realistically. Just jump over the board, just jump overboard and hold F whenever you see the ship light up like this, and you can just kind of push it along. And you can swim faster than your ship, so don't worry about being left behind or anything. Yeah, you can definitely see why people get so frustrated with the wind. You know what, I'm not actually going to kind of aim for the islands between Sunspire and Mount Malefic over there. Just so I can catch a bit more wind. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and release these. Yeah, just re release them completely. Then tighten them again. Ah, I think I'm kind of turning a little bit too deep here. Yeah, definitely. Now the wind is just going to be blowing directly into my face again. I guess I'll just uh, zigzag like this then. Should be good enough. It means I have to go through all this again. Fun. the power of OBS, you did not have to watch the rest of that. <laughs> uh. Alright, well, even though this is definitely going to be a shorter journey than most of the other open ocean crossings, I'm still going to have to cut this down quite a bit, so 
Uh, I guess I'll join you again whenever we get close to Mount Malefic over there. Maybe even past it. We'll just have to see. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Well, here we are. We are finally passing Mount Malefic. And, uh, the sun is coming up. We are heading in a... Southeasterly direction, which is where we need to be going. And I forgot to show you how the quadrant works, but uh, if you watch any of my previous videos, you'll be able to figure it out, at least where I'm, you know, crossing the open ocean. Um, so, yeah. Mount Malefic is absolutely enormous. It's, it's a volcano. It would be cool if it erupted every now and then, or, you know, it kind of gave signs of erupting here and there, where the, uh, where you could actually see smoke coming out of the crater. Uh, that would be really cool. But, uh, come noon, or thereabout, I have two clocks that, that show me the local time. Uh, I have a Fort Astron region uh, clock. Then I, down here I also have a Emerald Archipelago clock. Out of curiosity, do these show the exact same time? I think they do as well, so there's not really... Unless they change automatically. Huh. I kind of prefer this style clock anyway, the Astrin style, so I'll just go ahead and put this back where it was, up there on top of the ceiling. Kind of a weird place for a clock, but what are you going to do? Actually, you know what? Uh, let's have this... Yeah, that's, that's doable enough, I suppose. <clears throat> so, yeah come noon, I'll show you how to use the uh, Chrono Compass. Uh, this is a combination of the Quadrant and the uh, the clocks themselves. The clocks actually show you, if, if you know how to do it, the clocks are actually a way of determining your longitude, if you can figure it out. It's kind of complicated to explain. Um, but basically, you know, I'll just let you read the, the, the navigation manual and I'll kind of let you figure it out for yourself. It, it's kind of difficult to explain, so yeah. The chronometer is a precise clock calibrated to tell the sun time at longitude zero. By comparing the clock, by comparing the, uh, by comparing the clock time with your observed local time, you can determine your current longitude, east or west. At local noon, when the sun is directly south, check the clock time on your chronometer. Every four minutes of difference between clock time and your local time, noon, are equal to one degree of longitude. For example, if the chronometer reads 11.56 at local noon, your longitude is 1. Yeah, it, it's... I'm not that very good at math, so this is kind of a harder, you know, thing for me to figure out. But it works for some people. Me, not so much. I, I very much prefer the Chrono Compass. Let's go ahead and get our gaff sails angled out. The last thing I want to do is capsize. And there we go. The wind is just kind of it's just going to roll off the sail. We don't really want the wind hitting the sails directly. We want the wind to kind of roll off of it. 
so that's made us a little bit more stable. We're still kind of uh, li uh, listing a little bit, but it's not that bad. kind of weird how the sails actually clip through each other. Bring that into about there. That can be about there-ish. And there we go. And yes, for anybody who just happens to stumble across these videos, or this video in particular, um, and they don't know anything about the game, there are storms in the game, and they can be extremely dangerous if they catch you off guard. I'm really kind of going through my food supplies here at a pretty quick rate. but I should have enough to get me to Happy Bay at the bare minimum. Alright, so I will see you guys whenever I have made significant progress. Okay, and it is also worth noting that whenever the fish just come out of the water, you are free to just pull, pull them in as quickly as you possibly can, because whenever they go out of the water, they just kind of die. <laughs> There we go. Have I ever caught a black fin hunter before? I think those might be kind of new. Yeah, those are the fishing hooks. These are the firewood. So the way you uh, cook your fish is you get a piece of firewood from the box, and then you just drop the piece of firewood into the into the stove, and you just let it cook. And that's basically it. And as you can see, the waves are starting to become pretty choppy, so... Things are really starting to heat up a little bit here. Now that's not good. I'm kind of taking on bits of water here and there. Let's, uh, try and angle out a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, the port side is really kind of struggling here. Let's uh, release these a little bit more. Let's see if that helps. It's also worth noting that your character does have weight as well. You're not just an invisible floating camera. You do have uh, mass to you. Well, slowly but surely, we are making progress. I shall see you guys in a while. Well, that's not good. That, for people who do not know, is a storm. It's not a serious one, judging by the waves. But if we get closer and closer, it's going to start like having lightning, and you're going to hear thunder, and all kinds of bad stuff. And it looks like it's coming right towards me, which is not what I want to see. Yep, I just heard some thunder. Oh boy. At least this ship I have, you know, some shelter I can kind of hide away in. All 
I also like how it's like basically just completely silent in here too. Like with my speakers, I cannot hear anything. Ooh yeah. That storm is definitely picking up speed. I don't like doing small hauls like this. I feel kind of ripped off whenever I do stuff like this. <laughs> but it's all I could afford whenever I was at East Wind, so uh, we should be bringing a, in a pretty decent profit with this, though. So keep in mind that I spent 17,006, almost, almost 7,700, so. Seventeen thousand seven hundred. Okay. Um, oh yeah, that rolled up right on top of me. Well, I hope you're all ready for a fun time. Yeah, make a pretty good screenshot or thumbnail. Now, in real life, you would not want to have your sails down like this at all whatsoever. But, because there's not, like, damage to your sails in the game yet, I'm just going to leave them down. But in real life, yeah, you'd be hustling to bring these things up as quickly as you possibly could. You know, it wasn't my favorite movie, but the Disney Pocahontas movie, I always enjoyed that scene when they were first sailing to, to the New World. I loved the crap out of that scene as a kid. The, oh, yeah, that was some lightning. Getting some flashbacks of that particular scene right now. <laughs> and yep, definitely feeling the ferocity of it now. You know what? Just. Just for my own safety, I think I'm gonna go ahead and raise up the bow gaff sail and the stern gaff sail. We'll just leave up the middle one for right now. going to cost us some speed, but we don't really have a time limit for the trade missions. And we're not going to have quite as much wind going directly into those sails, so we're not going to run the risk of capsizing. Now, it looks like the storm has just, just overshot us. I think I have yet to actually get caught directly in the middle of a storm, and it's not something I really want to. It's not something I really want to experience either. Oh yeah, that's that's some really nasty lightning. I've always been able, you know, I've gotten close. Don't get me wrong, but I've always been able to keep an eye on where the storm actually was. I don't think I've ever really gotten swallowed by the storm, per se. So, uh, where is Mount Malefic, by the way? Uh, it's over there. So, alright, we are officially leaving the Eastern region, everybody. So, that little speck way back there in the distance, <clears throat> that is Mount Malefic. Way, way, way back there in the distance. Uh, we've come quite a ways. I don't know what day we're on ever since we, uh, departed. I think we're like on day five already. Uh, but with the sun going down, I thought this would be a good time to try and show off the quadrant since we are, since I'm kind of treating this as like a, uh, 
video for people who are just kind of randomly stumbling across the game, and I kind of want to show everything off, because what else am I going to do? Uh, whenever I'm not, like, actually recording, I'm just sitting over here watching YouTube videos, and it's already, like, almost 7.30. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all this in one sitting. I, I would like to, but I don't know if it's going to be possible or not. Because I'm, I'm going to have to go to bed kind of early tonight, so... Um, <clears throat> yeah, once night once nighttime rolls around, I'll show you uh, how the quadrant works. But this game is it does offer you some things to do while you're waiting to get from island to island. Uh, you can buy a broom and you can kind of clean the entire interior of the ship, which I've been doing. <laughs> It doesn't really serve any function, it just kind of makes the ship look a little nicer. And it just kind of provides you something to do while you're just waiting to get from one point to another. Um, but thankfully I have a double monitor set up so I can just watch videos while I'm recording, so I don't got to worry about keeping myself too busy. Otherwise, I'd probably just... I completely forgot about my fish. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I'd probably just go into my other room and just play my Nintendo Switch. I'd probably just play my Nintendo Switch for a while. And yes, I do have a stutter, and I do kind of outrun my mouth for a while, so... Or my mouth kind of outruns my brain, excuse me. I, tr I try to pull a Joe Biden here and there, basically. Alright, so... The sun's about to go down, like, completely. And the stars should be coming out before too long. What we want to do is we want to find north, right? We want to grab our quadrant, which is this thing right here. And there are a few ar uh, archipelagos, constellations in the game that you want to keep an eye out for. Um, so you've got Bing, 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 Bing. You've got this kind of boat or bow-shaped area arrow. Oh my god, I can't talk. You've got this boat or bow-shaped constellation, and this star at the bottom left of the constellation is the North Star. So pull out your quadrant, aim it at the North Star, right-click on your mouse, and it'll show you, it'll show you your uh, latitude, your north and south. So right now we are at 39 longitude. So if we come down here to grab this map, yeah, we are very much on our way. I think I might be one square over. So I think I'm on longitude three. I think. I'll be able to check that for sure tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, whenever I can use the chrono compass, which is something I'll have to show off uh, on camera for the newbies. So I'll see you around that time. <laughs> 